Yo, welcome back. This is gonna be a fun video to make. Again, we're testing some different stuff, but I appreciate everyone that's been watching, subscribed, has liked the videos, has commented, has sent me messages, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys so much being here. Today, we are going through in ranking each and every one of the cars that I've owned, maybe a couple bonus vehicles in there as well. And I've had a pretty big collection of cars. I've tried to own something different than the last every single time I got something. I didn't just like stick to one manufacturer, or one platform. Well, without further ado. All right, so first things first, we have my 1987 Camaro. This was a V6. My dad got me this car. We bought it from his buddy. His buddy was a painter. He painted it, made it look really sharp, really nice. It was a V6, it was manual, and that was its biggest downfall for me. I was too damn scared to learn manual and to drive this thing in the winter. I thought I was gonna destroy it because it was all pristine and nice. I didn't own this car very long, but it is one of the first vehicles I ever drove that was manual. I went down the street, my dad was like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, I can't do this, I can't figure it out. I panicked and we sold it. So it had a really nice paint job. It was really clean. I, it's basic. I would say it's basic. It was a V6, but I mean, for a kid's first car, I was freaking out, man. Number two, the PT Cruiser. If you guys have been following me, you might know a thing or two about this. Oh my God, the PT Cruiser. So I got this right after the Camaro. We went from not functional to functional. I can drive this thing all year round, but it wasn't cool. It wasn't the PT GT. It wasn't turbocharged. It, it was the PT loser, all right? But I still had that car itch, that modification itch. I wanted to do something with the vehicle. So I instantly started modif modifying it. We'll use that pretty loose. <laughs> Went to AutoZone, seen what I could get. Uh, got a stick on hood scoop because they had that there. I tried to buy hubcaps. My friend said, no, you're an idiot. You have actual wheels on the car. You don't have steelies. You can't just put hubcaps on wheels. That's not how it works. I didn't get it at the time, but I said, okay, I, I barely have enough money for the hood scoop. So I guess I'll just get that. So I stuck that on there, gave her the whole eyeball job and just lined her up and stuck it on. No measurements needed. Uh, after that, I put in two 12 inch Alpine type R's and then uh, that wasn't enough. So I took out the back seats and I added two more 12 inch type R sub subwoofers. And uh, that was terrible. It was so loud. I can't believe I'm not deaf now. Uh, my wife would probably argue that I am, honestly. What? So I had a PT Cruiser with two seats and four 12 inch type R subwoofers. Then, oh, I also put on some headlight and taillight covers. They were like just completely blacked out and I couldn't see a damn thing while driving. These were so bad at night, like literally the worst. I couldn't see a single thing. So I took the headlight covers off. I left the taillights on because I didn't need to see behind me. That didn't matter. And I put HIDs in the halogen bulb housing headlights and I blinded every single person that I drove past. Um, I was a young, stupid kid. I thought I was cool. It did get the job done. I honestly didn't have any complaints, but it, this thing was crappy. It was my racer phase, all right? We all had it. I'm glad I got it out of the way. We're done with it. And now we're moving on to the next car, which was the 99 Mustang GT, baby. Oh my God. I wanted one of these so bad. This was like my dream car back in the day when I was a kid. For whatever reason, I just wanted a 99 Mustang GT. Well, was selling the PT Cruiser and saving up a little bit of money, able to get it. It was a V8 and it was also an Auto Tragic. I, I just still was nervous about manual at this point, obviously. I don't know why I was so afraid of it. It's not even that hard, but I was just terrified. Um, but this is one of the first cars that I actually like dabbled in and started to modify. I remember it had tint on it that was extremely old. Uh, so it was like turning purple. And I was like, oh, I gotta get this retinted. So I was like, I'll remove it. Oh my God, it was so caked on the car. I tried to remove it, tried to take it back in. It was just, absolutely terrible there was so much residue left so i paid a tin shop to clean it all up got some new tint on there and i wanted to go with the murdered out theme so i actually got some uh i think it was american racing wheels that was the first set of wheels i've ever bought put those on the car i didn't know what width was offset was diameter i just they were on the website they're like yo this fits a mustang i was like all right bet say less i put on some angel 
angel eyes halo projectors they looked kind of cool at night honestly but in the daytime you couldn't even see the lights were so crappy in there but they were smoked and they looked a little better and then i got some led tails that i didn't i don't know i was kind of indifferent about um, but i did do mustang stuff in my mustang uh, i wanted to show off to my friend we went through a car wash and then immediately afterwards i learned how bad wet tires with rear wheel drive is in a 99 mustang gt i floored it coming out of the car wash immediately like an idiot and I jumped a curb and smoked a mailbox. Yeah. But we were all right. Car was all right. Little scuff on the bumper, no big deal. But speaking of the bumper, um, so I put a Cobra bumper on there, painted it black to match the car. It was just primer when I got it. I, I traded the stock wheels for the Cobra bumper. Blue coolant all over my friend's driveway once. The alternator went out on it. And this is all within a year. I fell asleep while driving it and ran it off the road. Luckily, no one got hurt in that. That was a learning experience. As you can tell, I was a really dumb kid, like really stupid just in general. But it is the car that I got like my first taste of putting exhaust and intake on and hearing that and oh my god i was i was definitely hooked then so this car was great but i had so many issues i'm saying crappy honestly oh that's tough you putting it right next to the pt cruiser here we'll, we'll organize it a little bit uh we'll put it ahead of the pt cruiser but still crappy king of the crappy but here's where things get spicy all right got my first manual car baby a 2009 cobalt ss uh this was the lnf so it was the turbocharged engine uh bought it bone stock all it had was five percent tint which was extremely dark uh i got pulled over for that immediately cop was really a dick about it uh but i got it removed i learned manual in it loved it absolutely fell in love with manual and then i really started modifying so like the intake and exhaust on the mustang i paid a shop to do because i didn't know what i was doing so i spent all of my shop go paycheck on doing that but with this car i was like nah me and my buddies can do it so um uh, dylan really helped me out my buddy dylan uh putting on the bolt-ons on this car so the intake the exhaust the new intercooler the intercooler piping and then i got a tune and that was dude that was a life-changing experience the first time i modified a, a stock turbocharged car and then bolt-ons and tuned it and seen that difference and heard all the noises i was in love with cars i took this car everywhere every single weekend i was going to some car show got the yee 37s on there because they didn't make anything for that terrible bolt pattern i think it was five by 110 um but it wouldn't matter I, I was broke anyways i couldn't afford real wheels to save my life so i saved up as much as i could i got these it took a few months and i had them powder coated tiffany blue because that's what you do all right and then i got some halo projectors to match that uh tinted the taillights spray painted the logos myself again i, I brought it to car shows i really liked this thing and it, it was fun it was quick i mean my other buddies in the area i was able to put it down you know i had some wrx and stis racing me and i was able to beat them all right don't get mad in the comments that's just what happened i'm saying they're like bolt-ons in tune you make like 300 horse in these things they're honestly underrated and for that reason and that reason alone i'm putting this thing in maze balls this wow. was a pinnacle in my life and realizing that i love four-cylinder turbocharged vehicles so speaking of four cylinder turbocharged vehicles, we got the Evo 10, baby. That's the next up, all wheel drive. I bought this from my cousin and I scrapped together whatever money I could get and then got a loan and I could barely afford this car, but I just wanted it. And literally all my checks at the time just went to this car. Um, when I had, had purchased it, it had bolt-ons, um, XXR wheels, lowering springs, and some no-name tune. Uh, I had a slight oil leak too, but that was about the only problem with it. It had really low miles, which was awesome. Um, but other than that, I bought Fortunato coilovers for it. Absolutely loved those, and I still run Fortunatos to this day. Uh, I was able to slam the car, and it still drove really well, and that was the name of the game with this car. And Some of y'all might get upset, but I was into stance. I wanted to dump this thing on its nuts, and I just wanted to scrape. I thought it was so cool. I thought 
cambered wheels and all that was the business. Um, so I ended up swapping out the XXRs and getting some MB battles, which I don't know, a lot of people thought MB battles were pretty neat and I think they're pretty neat, but they're cheap wheels, like brand new. I think I spent 800 bucks for a set and then I got them powder coated illusion purple along with a lot of stuff in the engine bay. Um, it was really cool. I, I love this car and uh, I took it to a bunch of shows. I, I won a bunch of car shows and stuff. Here's a couple of trophies from it. Uh, this was a local Beaver Dam Swansea car show. This was at Auto Motion, which is one of the biggest car shows in the United States. I got first place best DSM slash Evo, and I couldn't believe it because Battle of the Imports back in the day, like this was the show. And the fact I got first, I could not believe it. I was a young kid and I just thought this was like, the coolest thing. I felt like I peaked. I was like, this is it. Like, I'm done. I, I don't need to do it anymore. No more car shows. This is it. Uh, no, but I, I was so stoked to win this. I drove this car in the winter a bunch. Um, I had fun with it. The all-wheel drive in the snow was sick, even though it was super low. Um, and I didn't keep it long because I really couldn't afford it. I had it for a little over a year, but it, at the time, again, all my money was just going to that. So I got to go balls, but I... I don't know if I like it more than the Cobalt. They're very close, so we'll, we'll come back. Next up, I was like, I'm done with the car scene. You know, I, I don't, I'm over it. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, I'm not going to deal with all this random bullshit from people. Screw it, I'm out. And I bought a new at the time, brand new. It was the first brand new car I ever bought. Mistake, giant mistake, don't do that. Um, Subaru Impreza, naturally aspirated, back to automatic boring car and all i wanted it for was just to like go camping or road trip that's all i wanted i didn't want to go to car shows i didn't want to, i wasn't going to modify it long story short i did modify it i didn't own this car long but i ended up putting an axle back exhaust on it i uh, got a new grill for it uh tinted it mm, i think that was about it but i hated this car i couldn't stand how boring it was to drive uh it was loud as hell when i put the axle back on because i had them also cut off um, one of the mufflers and it just oh it was so tinny so bad this car was terrible it was so bad that it literally made me get a truck so this is our first car and damn this sucks because it did i didn't keep it long at all and i lost my ass on it i lost so much money buying a brand new car and then selling it after a few months terrible anyways so then i'm like i still don't want to get back into the car scene but i want something fun so I got a Silverado Duramax, an LLY. Was able to scoop this up from a family friend. Thing was clean as hell. Our family friend stored it and only used it to tow his boat in the summer. Stored in the winter. I put a leveling kit on it. Uh, I think it was some fuel wheels and then some like LED headlights and tint and then some different mirrors. Um, was really cool until I realized that like maintenance cost on a diesel is insane and I do not need a diesel. Like oil changes were crazy, having to replace a fuel filter, all this crap, like it's just expensive to own and I didn't use it for what it was meant for. I mean, I just drove around and whistled. That's all it did. It was really cool though. I did like the truck. I, I liked it a lot. It just, I literally didn't need it and I'm not a truck guy. So I'll Sorry, put it, bro. I'll put it in basic, but definitely ahead of the Camaro. High basic, high basic. Um, some real quick ones in here after like during the truck phase i really really got into motorcycles uh, my first bike was a honda cbr 600 love this bike to this day i love this bike i even have like a can you see a honda wing tattoo because of this bike i literally fell in love uh, me and my buddy neff always would go riding this thing was amazing it was cheap to get fast as f then we have the husqvarna smr 450 supermoto this one's really hard because I love and hate this bike with all my life. This thing, I've never had more issues with anything in my entire life than this goddamn bike. And thank you, Neff, for helping me with, through all of it because I didn't know what I was doing with it and it constantly had issues. The motor seized up, um, just a ton of different stuff. It was every time I rode it, something broke. But the thing is, the, the few minutes it would work, this was like the best, most amazing bike that I've ever driven. So for that, I'll put in crappy and not damn this sucks because it was awesome. It just sucked. But then after that, I had a guy reach out to me and he wanted to trade me his CBR 1000 because he was scared of it and he just wanted to go back to a 600. I was like, hell yes. 
This thing was the most unnecessary thing I've ever owned, but I loved every bit of it. This is gonna be our first God tier. Dude, CBR 1000, oh my God. Fastest thing I, I'll probably ever own in my life. It ripped. It had a power commander, um, a Yoshimiri exhaust, which my CBR 600 had too. Um, it had some red tape around the wheels, that sucked. Um, but me and my buddy Neff would literally go ride these bikes, and he had one too, which made it awesome. We called them the twins. His had a Repsol, uh, like, livery, and mine was just white, and we would go ride these things for days. Oh, the Pioneers used to ride these babies for miles, and it's in great shape. Just go out and ride. It would hurt my back, but it was super fun. Um, we rode all over the place, never got in trouble with it, and never died on it, so thankful for that. It, it was God tier. I miss that bike every day. We ended up moving up north here and I had to get rid of something. The bike unfortunately was it. I would love to get one again. Probably not a sport bike though because my back hurts. Um, but I did take this to the track. This bike was way too much for the track. Uh, honestly, I would be completely happy on a 600. No one needs a thousand, but it's insanely fun and it's amazing. So I wouldn't necessarily stop someone that was a bike enthusiast and has had a previous bike because it's a handful, my God. All right, then another really legendary vehicle for me that I've owned. Okay, so my Focus ST, a 2014 Focus ST ST3 package. So I had the Recaro seats, projector headlights, uh, some ambient lighting stuff, I don't know, a bunch of stuff like that. I, I, I love this car. It was kind of a similar story to the Cobalt SS. Like this was me getting back into the car scene. I was like, you know what? I, I gotta modify everything I own. I love cars. Why the hell would I ever let what someone says stop me from doing one of my hobbies? So it was like that wake up moment. So okay, I'm getting back into a car. This was after the Duramax. Um, I love hatchbacks. This car was affordable when I got it. It wasn't too expensive. And it was turbocharged and it had a nice interior. So I was like, screw it, let's go with the Focus. I did full bolt-ons, uh, Fortunato coilovers in the beginning. This was the first car that I ever drag raced, that I ever autocrossed, that I ever put on bags. I ended up putting on Airlift 3P. Uh, I was tuned, did all the modifications myself. And I really got to take this car from stock to modified. And I loved it. I, I did everything I wanted to do with this car. And I it was like the car I owned for the longest period. I think I owned this thing for like three years or something like that. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was such a good car to me. I never had an issue with this thing and I beat the living hell out of it. So anyone that talks shit about focuses, yeah, they probably deserve it because they drive around with all their crackle tunes and shit. But it is an amazing car and I love it and I would recommend it to anyone. I would daily one again. Um, I, I, I have no bad words for this thing. It's tough to put it at God tier. I'll put it, it's going at the front of a maze balls, which is still really good. I mean, that's commendable. Uh, this is my Saturn. I went and bought it in the middle of the night. I got to this gas station. And I poked my finger through the frame and uh, realized it was rusted to hell. The wires were showing. I don't even know how I got it home. I literally bought this car. I think it was for $500. And that was a mistake. The odometer didn't work. So it seemed like it had low miles. I owned this car for one day, literally one day. That was, damn, this sucks. That is bottom of the barrel. The one that got away, my Jetta Sportwagon TDI. Bought this thing bone stock and I got a smoking deal on it. At the time I paid $7,000 out the door, had 90,000 miles, but it had the diesel gate warranty. So like powertrain was all covered until like 120,000 miles or something like that. So a decent little warranty on it to boot. Um, warranty didn't matter because I did an EGR and DPF delete. But with that, I was getting over 60 MPG. It could move and get out of its own way. Like it wasn't fast, not fast at all, not even close fast, but it Enough to like make you kind of giggle and smile while you're driving it because like you got that whistle blowing and stuff with the turbo. Put it on H&R coilovers, had some rotiform BLQ wheels, uh, tinted it, did a chrome delete. Dude, this is the best daily. This is the best daily. I regret, this is the only car in this entire list that I regret selling, the Jetta Sportwagon TDI. I wish I still had this car to this day. I absolutely loved it. It was good to go. I, you could do anything with it. I'd take it across the country. I love this car. It's so roomy, so functional. Made cool noises. It was diesel. Honestly, I don't know if you guys are gonna be like, what the hell, you're an idiot. I'm putting this in God tier. Yeah! It literally was. I want one again. I love this car so damn much. Amazing. All right, next up, we have my project car that I picked up and I actually traded 
I traded the TDI for this, a 20th anniversary Mark IV GTI in a Mola yellow. It had a lot of issues. It had so many problems and I spent a lot of time going through and fixing everything I possibly could. I got some really cool headlights for it that I picked up from a buddy. Had the Heritage Stuttgart wheels that I thought were so sick and were like custom made to be specifically for that car. Put Air Ride on it. It had Raceland coilovers that rode like shit. I drove it in the winter on air and just enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, it was a really cool car, but I ended up picking up some more cars, which we'll get to here in a second. And it just didn't make sense to keep all of them. So this one's, I'll put it at the bottom of Amaze Balls. I really like it. I have a, I am a sucker for Mark IV GTIs, especially a Moly Yellow. Dude, that color was so sick. And you can tell the first like color, different color car on this list. I mean, we had the blue Camaro, but the rest are pretty basic. I'm not going to count the Saturn. Next up, my current daily, it's bone stock. I don't have a lot to say about this, but it's been reliable for me and I've been driving the hell out of it. I have a Mark IV uh, Jetta VR6 24 valve six speed. It has axle back exhaust it's axle back or cat back exhaust that the previous owner did and i think it's tuned um but that's it it's my daily commuter it's really nice though i enjoy the car and i have some stuff i want to do to it i have some coilovers some wheels if you guys are interested in watching me build the jetta and making my daily not a daily anymore make sure to comment down below so i know um but i would put this i mean at the top of basic bruh wait no i'm not putting it over the duramax that that'd be a way cooler daily if i could afford it but it's solid, it's a solid car. And then up to my current date car, the one that I have right now, the A90 2020 Toyota Supra, the BMW, whatever you wanna call it. I love this car so much. I bought it bone stock from Texas, drove it back, and I've done Fortunato coilovers, HKS intake, HKS exhaust, MA performance, downpipe, heritage three-piece wheels, have some Michelin tires on there. Pilot Sport 4S, Street Hunter Wing, Fly One Motorsports Lip, and Rear Spats. The Aza Auto Wheel that's in there, I absolutely love the custom wheel that they built for me. The thing is gorgeous, and driving that car is just amazing. One of my favorite cars of all time to drive is the Honda S2000. And this feels like a Honda S2000, but with way more power. Uh, the seating position similar. You sit really far back. You have the longer hood and then you kind of sit on the rear wheels. And I just love how that feels. It feels like a driver's car. Car handles amazing. With bolt-ons and tune, I have it tuned on 93 by Boost and Performance. It's making solid power. It's around 420 horsepower or so. Really comfortable. Um, obviously I made the video on things I hate, but I absolutely love this car and it's going in God tier. Just above the Wagoon. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it over the bike even. This is my all time favorite. I'd love to keep this car forever if I can. It, it's a masterpiece, I love it. Some people absolutely hate it and that's fine. That's how the car community rolls. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm curious where you guys rank this car. What's your favorite car and what's your least favorite car from this list? I, I'd love to hear it and I try to read every single comment. I mean that. So appreciate you guys for watching. This is a different video. We're gonna be trying some more, but I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here.